um, I'll ask just two questions, one for Mr. Shaw and then one for uh, Mr. Green. Um, and they both, and clearly, um, many of you have stated the burden is on the applicant to uh, make it to prove that you meet the standards under the Act. Also, if you look at Section 10 of the Act, it makes it clear that while the advisory opinions are to be requested from the department, they can make those for the uh, board right to exercise that function. And it makes clear that failure of that and to provide the request information may be considered as grounds for this board to deny the license. So I guess my, my two questions, I guess I'll start with you, I'll start with you, Mr. Green, are given that you've made very clear in your um, filings some of the holes or areas where the state and local agencies did not feel they could make advisory recommendations. <coughs> but given that section of the statute, and the burden on the applicant. I'm having a little trouble following why that's um, grounds for a motion to dismiss, because what it seems like is that that function then forfeits to the board, which can accept or modify or reject an advisory opinion, and that the applicant would have failed to meet their burden <coughs> to provide information needed for a license and, and, and would suffer that consequence. So I'm having a little trouble following on the motion to dismiss why those holes leave us um, where we would, should approve your motion. Uh, the Act of 4298-16A, which I've uh, referred to a couple of times in my argument, says that failure to comply with any promulgated board rule, regulation, requirement, or procedure for the licensing of energy facilities shall constitute grounds for suspension or dismissal. Um, respectfully, I suggest that the board has already found Infinity's materials at one point wanting and went with the suspension route. Um, at that point, the board indicated that its primary concern was the absence of a water supply plan. But CLF's motion, which predated that order of the board, was founded on many other gaps and uh, issues with what Infinity had provided to the agencies and to the board itself. The board appropriately gave Infinity a chance to cure those deficiencies. Infinity came forward with a water supply plan that obviously that there is some disagreement in the room about uh, whether it actually cures that deficiency or not. But Infinity has not cured the numerous other deficiencies that CLF pointed out in its original motion. That is uh, explained at more length in CLF supplemental filing. And at this point, with the board having given Invenergy the opportunity to cure the deficiencies, and Invenergy not having cured the deficiencies, dismissal under the act is appropriate. Thank you. Uh, my question for you, Mr. Green, is um, about the statutory time frames. I think everyone argument for the motion to dismiss has said if we were to include that motion, we would anticipate that we would be asking advisory opinions from a number of entities. And Mr. McElroy spelled out some of them. Um, where would, where do you see if we were to deny motions to dismiss this the, the directory time frames in the act? Where, where do you see we are in this process? As far as where we are in the process, I think you know. I think where you are is you're you're at the point where uh, where you have the, the rule like it's it was one point nine. The rule that off that off allows you to one nine one point nine yeah. It allows you the opportunity to ask for additional input from agencies at any time after. The other, uh, uh, I think, management tool that you have is the, is the rule that you have said it's a rule of commission, right? which was, which was a rule that said after a suspension period is concluded, the board has the ability to adjust the timelines for any of the you know, normal, regular timelines that are in the statute. So you have an, you have an agency reduced timeline. They normally are typically 
be up to a uh, six-month process. Uh, but given you know, the fact that we may be dealing with very discrete, very kind of specific <coughs> issues, um, I think it would be, you'd be well within your discretion to modify <coughs> the timelines to lessen, say, the amount of time that you would expect to be uh, needed <coughs> for it. So, for example, for the water supply plan, um, you know, so it was filed in January. Um, you could refer that to the, to the agencies, to the agencies that were mentioned, and then, and then provide an opportunity, say, in you know, less than six months, you know, think that would be necessary and needed for a just the water supply plan. So I think I think the answer is you have, you have I think there's some flexibility. Yeah, I think we're we had the initial advisory opinion process, and we, and we were on our way to those final hearings, which we could not get to because of the deficiency of that was. Right? So that I think you know, it's just to where where we were in the regular track we were at the uh, at that's the where we were at. Schedule. <coughs> I should point out that Tom was asking for 45 days and it would be sufficient amount of time. <coughs> that was for a different purpose than what you're talking about, which is asking the agencies to undertake what they do with the water supply plan and the other issues. Right, just to correct the record on that half of the town. Yeah, that, that 45 <coughs> days of those folders wasn't about the advisory opinions. Madam <coughs> Chair, may I please uh, have the opportunity to respond to what I did that Do you need me to repeat myself for the record? Oh, sorry, I was just getting. Thank you. I just wanted to add that uh, Invenergy he accused CLF of mischaracterizing the board's opinions. Uh, Invenergy is actually the only party here that is characterizing the opinions at all. CLF has been quoting them. The opinions speak for themselves. They say what they say, not what Invenergy says they say. Mm -hmm. And what they say is that the lack of information provided to us by Invenergy them of the ability to adequately evaluate the project and provide the board with reasoned judgment as to the effect of the facility upon the community, and that many of the data responses received from Invenergy were incomplete and at times evasive. Those are important points to remember. And Invenergy also says that this is not an unusual situation. The board requires flexibility in dealing with uh, applications from major facilities like this. But again, if you go through the past board orders cited by Invenergy in its filings, I at least could not find in any of those orders situations where agencies said that they couldn't do their jobs because of failures on the part of the applicant. That's all. Thank you. Could I briefly re respond to the question posed to Mr. Shore about where are we in the process? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, and this is an issue that I do not believe has been addressed, except that it appeared that in Benji in this submission uh, stated that they thought the suspension was automatically lifted upon the filing of the water plan within the 90 day period of time. Um, I disagree with that, and I believe that where we are in the process is we are currently under suspension. Uh, I believe that because we're 1.15 uh, parens A5 cancellation of suspension requires that the cancellation of the suspension be done in writing. Um, it says the board may, in writing, at any time, cancel a suspension of the board proceedings if the non-compliance has been rectified or is no longer of consequence to the parties in the board. Given the fact that there has been no uh, written document lifting the suspension, I believe we are still under suspension. And therefore, I believe that ties in nicely to a recommendation I would like to make, and I, I 
probably was not clear enough about doing it in my argument. I believe that what this board should do is focus on the submitted work plan and get the information, which I believe the board is planning to do, from the various advisory uh, agencies that need to review the board plan, and that the suspension should continue in effect for whatever period of time the board decides is appropriate for those agencies to render their opinions. Then when those agencies report back to the board, this board can make a finding as to whether or not the uh, water plan is truly a viable plan rendering uh, the non-compliance uh, satisfied. Uh, that would be where I believe we are in, in the uh, proceedings. I believe we remain under suspension. I believe we should remain under suspension until the advisory uh, agencies report back. I believe at that time this board should make a ruling on the viability of the water plan. Besides, the water plan is viable, we then move forward into hearings. So that's where I believe we are. Thank you. Thank you. Comment? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'm interpreting this, but when I look at our suspension order, <coughs> it stated clearly in writing that, it was that the application proceedings would be suspended for 90 days, which seemed to me constructive in writing that after 90 days the suspension will be posted. Well, that's how I would interpret that. The energy agrees with that. And for the record, to make CLF's position clear, uh, we do believe it's appropriate to dismiss the application and close the docket today. 